So the purpose of this semester project is to allow you the ability to understand how to apply biomechanics to understand endurance performance and really to dive into a specific question that you find interesting. You know, with a size of class like this, it's hard to really have a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversation and tease out who's interested in this sport, who's interested in that sport, or maybe in this rehab situation or what have you. And so what I'm doing in this project is allowing you the opportunity to really zero in on your interests. And I'll guide you along the way. And uh, really the key is that we're going to be looking at uh, endurance performance from a biomechanics perspective. The danger of doing a project is that when we start down the path of answering a particular question, that we start gravitating back to our area of interest. And that area for you may be nutrition, it may be ex-phys, it may be uh, athletic training, it may be motor learning or something like that. And that's all fine. It may be biomechanics. Uh, and that's fine. And, but what we're going to do is make sure that we're taking a biomechanics perspective of endurance performance. Not to say that these other parts aren't important. They are just as important. In fact, you'll see some more presentations where I talk about the ability to understand endurance performance can only happen if we know biomechanics, exercise physiology, nutrition, athletic training, motor learning, motor behavior. We need all of these elements to really understand endurance performance. But for this project, we're going to focus in on how to use biomechanics to, uh, to understand endurance performance. But I do want you to find your area of interest and then uh, sort of dive into that a little bit deeper and look at the biomechanic aspect of it. What we'll do throughout the semester is we will build components of the project. So the semester project assignments that you'll do anywhere from three to four each week, they're designed to try to help put you to put together elements that you include in the presentation. Okay. You will prepare a three minute video presentation on a specific question that relates to endurance performance. I'll go through those in a separate presentation. The focus of the presentation is to explain to a general audience uh, how key biomechanic terms and or concepts can be used to answer the question. Again, not you know, keeping the, the perspective that we need everything to understand endurance performance, but this class we're gonna zero in on biomechanics. And the audience that you're presenting to is a general audience. So you're gonna use language that you would use for a friend or uh, maybe a family member who's not in the class and you're going to tell them an answer from a biomechanics perspective and you're going to try to do it in a way that they'll be able to understand as opposed to presenting to people in this class even. It's, it's going to be a three minute presentation and three minutes on one hand doesn't sound like a lot on the other hand it sounds like a lot. Uh, it is often challenging to make sure that um, you, you are narrowing down the key information to include to stay within the three minutes, okay? Uh, it's easy to include a lot of information if you have a 10 or 20 minute presentation. But by having a focused three minute presentation, this, I'm doing this on purpose because what I want you to do is evaluate what information is critical to include in that three minutes. You won't have time to include all the information that we'll even do in the semester project assignments. You're gonna to have to even whittle that down to some really key information that leads up leads to an answer to the question you're, you're addressing. All right, so the required elements of the presentation at the end of the semester, you'll have a three minute video. Uh, the video will incorporate an answer based to a question and we're, you're, you're gonna be selecting the question based upon empirical evidence. This is uh, evidence that is uh, coming from peer-reviewed uh, published papers, okay? As opposed to anecdotal evidence, which is, hey, what works for me? What's, and you, you hear stories of people saying, oh, well, I used this special super duper shoe. I ran a minute faster in my 5K. Therefore, everybody should run in this super duper shoe. Not the case. We need to base our answers on the empirical evidence uh, that's available. <clears throat> and uh, to that uh, point, you're going to highlight two research manuscripts, peer-reviewed and published. I'll go through more of this uh, in other presentations. <coughs> These peer-reviewed 
uh, primary sources are uh, papers that describe the results of an experiment. All right, and that's going to be the key. And we'll go through that uh, several times in the first couple weeks of the class. You must also highlight two biomechanic concepts or terms. And I want you to pull the terms off the worksheet that we have for the, for the class, biomechanics terminology worksheet. And why is that? Because a lot of times it's, <clears throat> it's, it's easy to deviate off that list. And I want you to really zero in on the list and uh, identify some terms that are there because those are the terms that we're going over in the class. <coughs> Sorry. All right, so as I mentioned, oh, so at the end of the, uh, especially you're gonna send me a link. It's gonna be a three minute video. It's gonna have an answer based upon empirical evidence. You're gonna emphasize two research papers, primary sources peer reviewed, and you're gonna highlight two biomechanics terms or concepts that are, are on the terminology worksheet. Uh, okay, there, yeah, the weekly semester project assignments are really built to get us to the end of the semester and, the, and to put together uh, the project. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'll also have some meetups throughout the semester to make sure that you feel comfortable as you're pulling together the information. <clears throat> All right, so why are we doing this? Well, one uh, point that is really important to me is I want you to be able to distinguish between anecdotal and empirical information. In our fitness industry, it's very easy to rely on anecdotes that promote products or ideas or training regimes or, or what have you. Uh, we need to really place a lot of value on the empirical evidence, the peer-reviewed primary sources of information. The anecdotes are, are important, and, and you'll see I, I do actually emphasize getting some anecdotes as part of your uh, presentation. And the anecdotes would be, hey, this is what worked for me, okay? I wore this shirt, I wore these shoes, I used this bike, I used this tire pressure, whatever it is. Uh, that's anecdotes. Empirical information is someone conducted a experiment uh, based upon the scientific method and, uh, and got some results that we can then use to generalize, hopefully, to uh, help endurance performance. My other goal with doing this project is you'll start applying biomechanic terms uh, to understand endurance performance. So clearly the two terms I want you to pick, I want you to pick two terms that are directly related to your project. <clears throat> and I want you to be able to assemble a variety of information to communicate an easy to understand answer, which is why I target the general audience as your, your target audience, as opposed to a scientific audience. Uh, I want you to pull information from anecdotes or, or anecdotal information websites. I want you to pull information from peer reviewed journals. I want you to pull information that we cover and then pull all that together in a discernible message and then use terms and language that someone can understand. And I do want to also encourage innovation. You're hearing me talk about that throughout the semester. Is I want you to look at things and then give a different perspective uh, to, uh, to the information that's out there. Criteria for success, complete all the weekly assignments. Okay, those are done. They're not graded. They are simply done. And uh, you, you uh, get points for turning them in on time. Produce a video that produces an answer to the question based upon empirical evidence, emphasizes biomechanics terms and focused on endurance performance. A key to the success of this project, however, is picking a topic that you find interesting. I have a separate video on going through these questions, but these questions are here, are, are really based upon questions I've received from the community and from triathletes uh, in terms of, of uh, what they want, information they wanna know. They're questions I've asked myself that I want to know the answer to. So what stroke weight should I use? Should I buy a wetsuit? What type of wetsuit? What cadence should I use for cycling? What shoes should I run in? How do I recover from an injury? These are all questions that people want to know the answers to. And your job as a student in kinesiology is to really try to formulate answers to these questions. Now, what you're quickly find is that it's impossible to answer any of these questions in three minutes. <clears throat> in fact, what you'll probably have to do 
and I'll say this several times, is narrow the scope of the answer of the question. That is, should I buy a narrow helmet? Well, it depends. Are you a professional triathlete or are you just looking to complete a triathlon? If you're just trying to complete a triathlon, an narrow helmet may actually work against you. You may want to buy a helmet that is has the best ventilation so that you stay cool as opposed to a helmet that is more aerodynamic. It's a little less uncomfortable, feel the view changes. Uh, it, it can actually heat up a lot more. Uh, so the answer to this question may be depending on if you're trying to compete and win an age group spot, win a, a race or what have you, <clears throat> or get an entry to something, a qualifying uh, entry. Uh, you know, should I incorporate plyometrics training? Again, it, it depends on the type of subject you're looking at. Are you looking at older individuals? Are you looking at younger individuals? What level of experience do people have with plyometric exercise? So what you're, you'll have to likely do is define the scope of the answer that you're going to try to provide for uh, this question. And we'll talk about that more as we develop uh, the project. But this is a big picture of the project. I want you to pick a question that you find interesting, and then we'll go down the path to find anecdotal information. We'll go down the path to find empirical evidence, and then uh, selecting terms that, that help you understand endurance performance by answering those questions. Okay, thank you.